names on the boards, and they will become uh, central characters for us as we move ourselves forward. So, our topic is, uh, we're now, okay, all of these people live in a place called Hiram, Ohio. And uh, Joseph's about 30 miles away in Kirtland. And you can imagine, if you were living in Hiram, Ohio, and suddenly you get word that there's a man that's living 30 miles away that calls himself a prophet, would you be curious and want to see him? And uh, the answer is probably, yeah. You know, you're kind of like, well, who is this guy? You know, is he really a prophet? I don't know. Well, living in Hiram, Ohio, are, is a man named John Johnson, and he has a wife named Elsa Johnson. You would say John Johnson is extremely well-to-do. He has over 350 acres, and uh, it would be like uh, he lives in the Beverly Hills of, you know, kind of like the Hollywood, you know, kind of thing, compared to everyone else in town. And you'd say, for him, he's very well-to-do. He's just built a beautiful new farmhouse, and he has actually painted the inside of the house different colors. So you know that he is very well-to-do. In fact, he even made one floor look like a checkerboard. You know, with uh, little squares, you know, green, yellow, red, perfect, everything. Okay. So here's John Johnson. He's curious because he has learned that a man calling himself a prophet lives in Kirtland, but he wants to take along a protective shield. Okay. So you come to Ezra Booth. Ezra Booth is a minister in town, and he happens to be a minister of the congregation that the Johnsons attend. So the conclusion is, Father Johnson convinces Ezra Booth, come with me to Kirtland, and I'm going to take my wife, and uh, we want to meet Joseph Smith, but uh, we want you to be there in case he says anything so we won't be deceived. Well, okay, these three now go to meet Joseph. And as they meet Joseph, in the course of the conversation, they turn to gifts of the Spirit. And they want to know, is there any man alive that has the gift of healing? Joseph says he does. At which point, one of them says, well, Elsa here has a lame arm. Something that she has not been able, she's not been able to raise her arm up over her head for years. And the question is, is there any man that could heal Elsa of her affliction? Suddenly, Joseph Smith will now walk across the floor, and he will look now at Elsa, and he will say, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to be whole. In other words, that your arm, arm be, be, um, be healed. The result is, Elsa now lifts up her arm. There is great joy joy by the three, and the three of them uh, now immediately ask for baptism. For the Johnsons, they will return back to their beautiful farmhouse, uh, but, uh, and for Elsa, how she celebrates is she actually washes clothes. Now, I, I'm not quite sure I would have chosen that, but yay for Elsa. <laughs> okay, okay for, for Ezra Booth, however, he wants to know, what does the Lord want me to do? What's always your answer out of Kirtland? Journey. Yeah, go on a journey, go on that, that mission. For Ezra Booth, he is called on a mission to his hometown. In other words, go back, tell friends, tell your congregation what has happened to you. Now, in Hiram, Ohio, they have a schoolhouse. And through the week, the schoolhouse is used for children to attend school and for civic events. But on Sundays, you would say that the different congregations would meet in the schoolhouse. So early, here come the Methodists. They're the first in town. And then comes the Congregationalist Church, and then the next. And so Ezra Booth, he merely goes to the schoolhouse, and uh, he preaches to his own church. But then he preaches through the day to other churches. And one of the groups he preaches to is a church called the Campbellites, with Simon's Rider as your key man in the Campbellite organization. Now, who is more well-to-do in town than Father John Johnson? It's Simon's Rider. In fact, Simon's Rider lives directly across the street from Father John Johnson. 
And Simon's writer has actually hired an artist to uh, draw he and his wife in their carriage with the fringe on top, okay, uh, driving into their circular driveway. And so you'd say, Simon's writer, ah, oh, he's full of himself. You know, he's, uh, he's got money, he's more well-to-do than Johnson, he's the, okay. But suddenly, here preaching to his congregation is Ezra Booth. Simon's writer is curious, and he decides he will go alone to Kirtland, Ohio, to meet Joseph Smith. He meets Joseph, he's convinced of the truth, he is baptized, and then he asks Joseph, what does Joseph want him to do? And the answer, of course, is go on a mission. Simon's writer, that means uh, he's different than other people. Go on a mission and leave my huge, vast estate. He then says to Joseph, write me out my mission call. Now, I'm hard put to say anything against Joseph, but he could have used a spell check in this situation. <laughs> And when he wrote out Simon's call, wherever there is a Y, he put an I. Well, suddenly, <laughs> Simon's writer, his conclusion was, if you can't spell my name, how can you tell me to leave my property? He then rips up that missionary license, and he goes home convinced he's been deceived. In the meantime, Ezra Booth continues to be a missionary. Ezra Booth had thought whenever he came to a stream, he could, like Moses with parting the Red Sea, he could walk across on dry ground. And Ezra Booth had thought whoever he laid his hands on his head, they'd be instantly well. And when he found some continued to be ill and that his boots were getting muddy, his conclusion is, I've been deceived. Now you get two men that say they've been deceived. Which becomes the, who becomes the first apostate in the church? And the answer is, it's Ezra Booth. So uh, for Ezra Booth, he writes a series of articles. And in these articles, he announces that Mormonism, I've been deceived by it. Uh, for any of you that have run across anti-Mormon literature, if you trace it back, it always ends up with Ezra Booth. So he's your man. Okay. In the meantime, Booth now comes back to Hiram, Ohio, and suddenly he and Simon's writer, who'd been kind of like handshaking friends, suddenly they're best buddies, and Simon's writer says, move in with me. In other words, uh, wow, we've been through something. Let's kind of, you know, talk it over. In the meantime, uh, here's Joseph. He's back in Kirtland. Emma's given birth to twins. Tell me, did they live? No. Emma's just, uh, they've adopted twins from Father John Murdoch. What were their names? Julia, Julia and Joseph. And uh, suddenly you've got Sidney Rigdon as a scribe. How come? Where's Oliver? He's on a mission in Missouri. And so uh, Joseph and Sidney, and you've got Kirtland as a gathering place. Every time Dick and Harry is coming to see Joseph, what does the Lord want me to do? And so Joseph and Sidney begin to pray, can a place open up that's within a day's journey horse ride where we could go and we could continue the translation and that somebody could help Emma with the children and suddenly Father Johnson says, come stay with me. And you know, he goes, I even have a room where you can call it your translation room. And we got separate bedrooms, I got this big old house. Well, it all sounds good, what's wrong with the invitation? Okay, who lives across the street? And he'd say, well, wait a minute. Father John Johnson lives directly across the street from Simon's Rider. And uh, all of a sudden, here's Joseph coming to town. Well, Simon's Rider sees him. And he sees Sidney Rigdon. So Sidney Rigdon and Joseph Smith move in with the Johnsons. Simon's Rider's with Ezra Booth right across the street. And Simon's Rider, now uh, in the local newspaper, there in Hiram, Ohio, he challenges Joseph Smith to a debate. And the debate is the deception of Mormonism. At which point, Joseph now writes back via the newspaper and says, Oh, Simons, I would debate you, but it wouldn't be fair. How about if you debate Sidney Rigdon, 
who, like you, had been a Campbellite minister. Simon's writer then writes back via the newspaper, and he goes, I would debate Sidney if you weren't so stupid. Oh, well, Sidney now writes back via, via the newspaper. I would debate you if you were not so ignorant. And suddenly, from September all the way into 1832, into March, you'd say, what's going on? Well, it's newspaper columns, and they're getting longer and longer. In fact, you could start a column, I would debate you if you were not asinine, ignoramus, da-da-da-da, and it's the longest run-on sentence, comma, comma, exclamation, done. Okay, the next guy, I would debate you, but you are, you know, and then, okay. Tell me, how would you like to live in that neighborhood? Okay, adding to the issue, you get, in the meantime, Joseph and, and, uh, and Sidney Rigdon, Joseph's now translating the Bible into English, you know, but it's already in English, but he's adding in these plain and precious parts. And, uh, okay, in the meantime, they're doing that, they're holding conferences, but Simon's writer across the street is getting very upset because what starts happening is that many that gathered to Kirtland, they gathered to Kirtland because they wanted to be close to the prophet, but and when they find he's not there, they're now knocking on the door of Father Johnson, saying, would you mind if we just threw up a log cabin in your front yard? Oh, sure, I have plenty of room. So here's Simon's rider. He then walks out of his beautiful house. He looks across the street, and what's he got? Shantytown. <laughs> He's like, look, there's Father John Johnson's beautiful house. But suddenly you got these lean-to, you got these shacks, you got these temporary, well, it's like ward camp out is all in your front yard. Okay, you got this, and it's good for a week, but how about, you know, a lifetime? Adding to it, Simon's writer gets word that, uh, and notice, it's all rumor, that Joseph's going to make Hiram the gathering place and John Johnson Farm the, the main place to gather. After all, he's got 300 plus acres, would just put all the Latter-day Saints there. And adding to it, where the Ryder Farm and the Johnson Farm kind of come together like a cul-de-sac, Simon's Ryder hears that Joseph's going to build a temple there. Okay, Simon's Ryder wants Joseph out of town. Is there anything legally he can do? No, but he can form a mock, right? A mob then is formed, which is outside the law. So uh, he's got a plan, it just right. And so, okay, everybody got all the main characters? Okay. The plan goes like this. He has to wait just for the very right time. The very right time will come, okay, in March of 1832. Notice Joseph's been in the house since September. Notice that while Joseph has uh, been there, that you've had the debate going on via the newspaper. And now it's March of 32. And March, by March of 32, Joseph, uh, Joseph and Emma's twins are 11 months old. What's their names again? Joseph and Julia. Okay. And suddenly the twins have contracted a disease called measles. Today we get shots for measles. You, you do not want measles. But they've got measles, and measles were considered epidemic. So what would happen, they then call the doctor, you know, in other words, sent for a doctor to come. The doctor comes, he checks out the twins, he concludes, yes, they have measles. As a result, the doctor goes to the front of the property, and he puts a sign down on the front of the property that says what? Quarantine. Okay, meaning nobody can go in this house, and nobody can come out until the doctor takes a sign down because we're gonna trap the disease in the house. Now the crazy thing, before the doctor came, knowing the doctor was coming, Father John Johnson said to family members, great time to go live with friends. How smart is that? <laughs> you know, the disease passes. So all his family is out and everybody knows if you're calling a doctor, you're gonna keep a very small or skeletal crew in the house. So once the doctor has concluded that, yes, he's putting the sign on the front yard, who's living in the house, you'd say, well, Sydney's out living in one of those kind of lean-to shacks. 
And you'd say the only people in the house are Father John Johnson, his wife Elsa, good arm, okay, and Joseph, Emma, and the twins. Okay, once the sign goes in the front yard, that is the sign then for Simon's rider to move into action. If he's ever going to get Joseph, he's going to get Joseph where there, when there are very few people in the house.